And will you please welcome Justin to the stage. Come on, Brooklyn. Hey everybody, my name is Justin Wiedis. Um, I'm a teacher, I'm an educator. Yeah, okay, thank you. Nobody shows any love to teachers these days. Thank you. Uh, my mom called me the other week. She says, I'm really worried about you, Justin, because whenever I Google your name, all I see is pictures of you getting arrested at Occupy Wall Street. <laughs> Swagger. <laughs> Uh, so Tuesday morning when I uh, didn't show up for class, my students were really worried. Um, it was because I had been arrested at Occupy Wall Street. It's a long story. Um, here's the thing. I'm, I thought I was a cool teacher. My students absolutely didn't. Um, it, didn't it doesn't help uh, when you do, I teach physics. I'm a science teacher. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're the geeky, nerdy kid in high school, you're probably the geeky, nerdy teacher when you teach high school. That's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, <laughs> but when you do a physics remix to uh, Hey Ma by Cameron, that doesn't help either. But I did learn something, and this is, what I, this is the story I want to tell you, is that uh, when I didn't show up to class that day, I was arrested at Occupy Wall Street. My students came down to Zuccotti Park against the will of my principal, and that was a whole other fight, because um, they were worried about me. And I, I, you know, I was, I realized because I, I teach dropouts. I teach kids that, um, you know, have really struggled in the system. The system's failed them. They've failed the system. Uh, it's a, it's a mess. And there's a lot of these kids in the city, and. A lot of those kids are the same types of kids that I found when I, when I went to Occupy Wall Street. And so, you know, what, I, what happened when I came in the next day was that the students were all looking at me differently. They were all, they were all kind of, you know, excited about what had happened. Um, and so I kind of took off my physics hat for a minute and we got to talking about Occupy. And I think they couldn't stop using that word for like two years after that. Uh, they, uh, they, they were really, really into it, and so you know we began to make that part of the work we were doing, um, and you know they were struggling because their school was being targeted for closure uh, by the city. It was so-called underperforming, um, and so they wanted to start a campaign to save their school. They asked me to help them with it. I said, uh, "You're crazy. You're going to get me fired." <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, that's insane, but yes, I'm going to do that with you. Um, and they got their parents involved. We, got th we started to, you know, talk in the community about what it would take to, to do a campaign to save this school. Um, and so, you know, piece by piece, day by day, we worked after school. They created a website. Uh, they created press releases. They started going to these meetings, these public meetings, um, speaking out getting other students from other schools to speak out, and you know, building piece by piece this campaign to try to save their school. Um, and over the course of the next two years, we worked diligently uh, to, to grow this campaign. And as we did that, you know, it started to get the attention of, of the people in power, and that excited the young people. Uh, it excited them that for the first time they could actually speak out, that people were listening. Uh, they had to make a lot of noise, but they could be heard. And ultimately, uh, it kind of came to a boil last spring. Um, and they decided that in order to really get their grievances out there, they had to stage a walkout. Um, and that was a hard decision to come to, and most kids would never make that decision in high school. Um, so these were brave young people. They organized this walkout, and they put out a video on YouTube I remember the day I walked into class and they said, we shot this video and we want you to put it on the Occupy Wall Street page <laughs> of, of them. And I looked at the video and, you know, talk about swagger. The students had made this video. This was shortly after the Trayvon Martin um, saga. So, you know, students, you know, young people especially were, were all uh, feeling a certain way. And they had made this video with all of them with their hoodies and their fists raised into the air, announcing that they were going to have a walkout. And we put it up, and kids from all over the city saw this. Um, and on May 1st of last year, every single student 
in the school walked out. And not only that, but hundreds of kids from all over the city walked out from schools that weren't even being targeted for closure um, and joined them in solidarity with these students um, in this big summit that they held in a park uh, in Fort Greene. And so, you know, as a result of that, and a lot of people came out, even elected officials came out and supported these students. It was really a huge thing. I walked into the building the next week, and um, <laughs> the principal called the police uh, to come to, to the classroom. No joke, to come to the classroom. Uh, the security guards didn't want to do anything. You know, they, they supported me. I'd been in the, the building longer than the, the principal, actually. But <laughs> uh, he, he had to call the police. The police came into the classroom and threatened to arrest me in front of the students. Um, I didn't step into that building ever again, but, but the next week when I met with the students and parents and community members um, off, off campus, um, we reflected on everything that we had been through, and I realized in that moment that it wasn't through rap songs or trying to act cool uh, that you get your swagger, but it's actually through understanding the struggles of other people and walking them out in their shoes that you can understand and you can actually earn your swagger.